Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of Signs of Prophethood. This is your host, Omar Khalid. We're going to talk about in this episode the toleration, the tolerance of the Prophet of pain and animosity that happened against him in the beginning of the Dawah, in the beginning of calling people to Islam, and also his followers, and how to learn from this in our daily affairs, and also especially in these times when we feel the defeat of the Muslim nation. Before this, we would like to welcome Sheikh Ibrahim Zidane. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Ibrahim. A very important topic, Sheikh Ibrahim, because it's, of course, as every episode is related to what we are facing right now, the pain and the persecution, oppression, and sometimes occupation of the lands of some of the Muslims and so on. So we'd like to take this from the perspective that if anybody is faced with pain or oppression and he doesn't have a cause or a strong cause, he's going to give up. Or maybe he's going to give it make this cause for his personal gain or something like that. But if you have the pain so much and you persevere, that means there's something bigger than what can be shown by people. So we'd like to talk about this from the perspective of that what happened to the Prophet ﷺ from the beginning of the Dawah and how he <coughs> just tolerated all of this. Alhamdulillah, One of the signs of prophethood is that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the prophets of Allah is the same. Mm -hmm. It's the same from every prophet to the other. Mm -hmm. And that is, their success and their victory mm -hmm. does not come in a path that is soft and decent and pleasant and so on. It has to come after so much suffering and struggle between the truth and falsehood in such a way that people would, at certain moments, would give up if they don't have faith and do not have the Iman. Mm. They look only to the materialistic means of life they would be certain that they are defeated and ruined and vanished from the face of the earth. Right. But the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And it's meant to be this way so that the hearts are fully attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. The essence of the purpose of our life is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Mm -hmm. And the highest level of worship of Allah is the tawakkul and relying on Allah fully. That's why one of the things that if we look into the lives of the prophets of Allah, including the Prophet sallallahu you would find that they would reach this point Mm -hmm. where they take all of the means, all the worldly means, and they're ordered to do so, and nothing of that works when it comes to mm -hmm. their success or their mission and their da'wah and so on. Till the moment comes where the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intervene. Like Musa alayhi salam, he fled from Pharaoh and he left and taken the means till he reached a point where the sea is in front of him and the army of Pharaoh is behind him and there's nothing else for them to do. Mm -hmm. This is where the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. Yes. And let's mention the Quran Hatta it is stay as a rusul wa dhannu anna qad kudibu jaa'um nasrun. Till when the messengers of Allah they give up mm. of no hopes whatsoever from their materialistic needs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory come to them. Someone out of ignorance, he would say, why all of this suffering? And he's a messenger of Allah. And some, some even of the companions of the Allah, they mentioned that to the Prophet والسلام, when they didn't know the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. on earth. One of the great benefits as we heard that the truthful ones are the, the only the truthful ones would follow the messengers of Allah. Not, not because of fame, not because of wealth or the like of this. And to add to this, great meanings of servitude and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never be shown unless it's difficult times. So we can look at even the difficult times that Muslims are living today. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's an enjoyable time for those who are sincerely Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with patience. Relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Mm -hmm. Not relying on anyone on the face of earth. Mm -hmm. Having the good expectations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing the, the real thing. Knowing the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. What is meant by this is either people would renegate away, for, away from the truth. Or they hold fast to the truth even if it's not the most attractive thing on the face mm -hmm. of earth. That's what exactly happened to the Prophet wasalam, And the Prophet wasalam, 13 years in Mecca facing all kinds of atrocities and, and pain and, and all kinds of things. And even in Medina, mm -hmm. the tests that the Prophet ﷺ went through, that the Prophet ﷺ, all of his daughters, for example, they died in his mm -hmm. lifetime, mm -hmm. except Fatima you know, died after him by six months. And the death of his uh, only son and the death of his parents and the death of his uncle you know, that supported him and the death of Khadija radiallahu anhu. So many different trials that the Prophet ﷺ went through. And then his da'wah, calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. How did his people oppose this? By calling him names and by physically trying to stop the Prophet and, and the people of al taif when he went to them, throwing him with stones and all of this, this is nothing new. 
But the amazing part is that see the steadfastness of the Prophet ﷺ and the mercy that the Prophet ﷺ had towards his people mm -hmm. and the outcome of this. Oh. And how the Prophet ﷺ in the midst of all of these pain and trials and so on, he would give the glad tidings to the companions of the Allah anhum of the great victory. Mm -hmm. In the battle of Al Ahzab, the trenches, for example, the, this is a battle where the entire, all of the tribes came and they surrounded Al Medina, which is a very small area, and all the tribes of the Arab around it. And their goal was not just to fight a, a, a war or a battle and then they leave. Their goal was to basically destroy the entire Medina, and there's no more, you know, anyone be alive in it, men, children, everybody. Mm -hmm. And they surrounded in Medina. And how the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came, and it's very clearly mentioned in Surah Al-Ahzab. Mm -hmm. But the point when they were digging in the trenches around the Medina, the Prophet ﷺ said things that people of Al-Iman, you know, only people of faith would see this, and it happened. When he said, alayhi salatu that uh, uh, the Roman, uh, the, Ro the Persian has been liberated, that means it become part of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. Part of the Muslim land and the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the superpower of the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the afterwards, the Romans. And all of this, you know, the first one, it happened as the Prophet ﷺ said. Mm -hmm. And this is how, in, not in times when the Prophet ﷺ having, and the companions having physical power and so on, at times when they were weak and oppressed mm -hmm. and so on. And the same thing when he was going from Mecca to Al Medina and fleeing and being expelled from the best town beloved to him والسلام, and the best to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala him and Abu Bakr leaving and when Suraqa ibn Malik going after them mm -hmm. when the people of Quraysh they made a great prize for those who find the Prophet والسلام, and kill him and so on and he was going after them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the horse of Suraqa ibn Malik to be uh, sunk into, into the sand and would not move anywhere and he saw that this is a miraculous thing oh. that the Prophet والسلام, is protected he saw this that he can never get to him whatsoever and the Prophet ﷺ gave him, such, gave him such an amazing promise that he will carry the slogan or the, some of the treasures of uh, the king of Persia. SubhanAllah. Where is that <laughs> to this? You know, and years passes, and at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, became a Muslim. And at the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, he was among the army that went to Persia and they liberated this great land. And he took exactly what the Prophet ﷺ told him that he would carry and Umar radiallahu anhu approved it that this to stay with him. SubhanAllah. When did the Prophet ﷺ say that and how this happened years afterwards? And the Prophet ﷺ would comfort the companions. Don't be uh, rushing, mm -hmm. don't be in haste. Mm -hmm. When the Prophet ﷺ was sitting under the shade of the Kaaba and uh, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ or so, he came to him and he said, Don't you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah give us victory? Don't you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Prophet ﷺ explained to him, he said, from among the nations before you, they would bring a man and they put him in a hole on the ground. They would bring a saw and they would mm -hmm. split him into half and with calms that would calm his flesh from his bones. And that would not make him deviate from his deen. Mm -hmm. He was steadfast and strong upon the deen. And he said, the, the Prophet ﷺ said to him, yes. by Allah, a day would come that a rider would go from Sana'a to Hadr al in Yemen without fearing anything mm -hmm. for his uh, caravan except the wolf, mm -hmm. meaning it will be that safe. But then he said, تستعجلون. But you are people in haste. That means you're not seeing the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. <laughs> this deen needs people to sacrifice. <laughs> needs people to be upon the, the truth and to sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they do that, the outcome will be there for them. But the goals of the believers is the hereafter, not this life. So if we read into also history, the Islamic history, even after the Prophet وسلم, Sheikh Ibrahim, we're going to see that Salahuddin, for instance, or Qutuz, or the big names that we hear about, those, those who liberated uh, you know, Jerusalem and defeated the Mongols and so on, those were a result of other nations, also other generations, yeah. so to speak. So that gives us like the impression that we shouldn't just focus on the results, because maybe I can be part of a chain. Yeah. Maybe if I do something and I do, don't even see the results, maybe nobody will witness that I did anything. But this thing is going to be like a chain of actions. It's going to make something in the future. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth is. Mm -hmm. There's no such a thing as a time that a Muslim loses in it. Mm -hmm. and that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. Oh. Amazing is the affairs of the believers. All of their affairs is good. Mm -hmm. 
if ease and goodness happens to him, he's grateful to Allah and that's good for him. Mm -hmm. If something difficult he happens and trials and so on and he's patient, it's good for him. So the same thing for the Ummah, the Prophet ﷺ, for the individual Muslims, mm -hmm. there's no such a thing as bad times. Mm -hmm. The bad time is when a person deviates from the truth. That's the bad time. Mm -hmm. This is what is evil. But if a person is steadfast upon the truth, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to be upon. The results is not in our control. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the, in the Quran, for example, in Tansurullah, Yansurkum. Mm -hmm. If you make the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala victorious, Allah will make you victorious. Allah mm -hmm. will make you. Mm -hmm. Not that you would make yourself. In Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not change the situation of the people till they change themselves. So the situation is changed by Allah mm -hmm. if we change ourselves, and that's the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very beautiful. Shaykh Ibrahim, and we're going to continue after a short break with some of the incidents also that happened to the Prophet, but after a short break. So, dear brothers and sisters, we're going to have a short break and come back to how the Prophet Muhammad tolerated the pain and how to learn from this. In our daily affairs. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Welcome back, dear brothers. This is what we're talking about before the break the pain that Prophet Muhammad tolerated and how we can learn in our daily affairs about this. So, Sheikh Ibrahim, I have a question that maybe some people they say, well, we wish that we would have been like at the time of the Prophet وسلم, and we would like uh, make him like stand by his side and we're going to be like victorious with him and so on. How can you respond to them? Now, this is a question that or this is a statement that some of the tabi'een, the second generation after the companions of the Al-Anam said to Hudayfa mm -hmm. that if we were with the Prophet وسلم, we would have given victory and supported him and so on. And definitely this is a wish for all of the believers to mm -hmm. be in the level of the companions of the Al-Anam and to see the Prophet mm -hmm. and that's why the Prophet وسلم, he said that uh, people will come after me uh, that one of them, mm -hmm. or the best of my ummah, those who come after me, those who would wish that he would see me, uh, and in return he would lose his wealth and his family. Oh. So this is, this is the level of the love of the Prophet ﷺ that they have in them. But Hudayfa replied by saying mm -hmm. that, you know, it, basically condemning what he said, and he said that something of the like that you should have seen what we did or happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and he mentioned what happened in the battle of Al-Ahzam that when the people were surrounding in Medina and the people were in so much fear mm -hmm. that again this is, can be the end of it right? and again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most powerful so uh, the Prophet sallam, when he asked them who among you would go and see what is the affairs of the enemies and he will be my companion in Jannah the level of fear and coldness and, and all these types of things did not make anybody to move to that extent and then the Prophet ﷺ, he said to Hudayfa to go ahead and you go ahead. He said, when I stood up to go to fulfill the order of the Prophet ﷺ, and there's no way out of it, he said that he was certain that he would not come back. That he's going to his own death. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for that he did not die and the victory was for the believers without a fight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <laughs> blew the, the enemies away. But the point here is that they had that so much and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran uh, beautiful verses talks about this battle of Al-Ahzab mm -hmm. that he mentioned that their hearts reach their throats so out of the fear you know when someone is pounding his heart is pounding so uh, nobody should ask to be tested mm. because the Sahaba عنهم, they reached this level this higher level that nobody reached after the prophets of Allah mm -hmm. they're on the second level after the prophets of Allah after so much sacrifice mm -hmm. and that's why a person should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be safe mm -hmm. from being tried from being tried and being afflicted with all kinds of difficulties. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو وصلوا الله العافية فإذا لقيتموهم فثبتوا That means do not wish to meet your enemies. Mm -hmm. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be protected. But if you meet them, then be steadfast and be firm. So this is a very serious matter. How many people they asked for a trial to happen to them and they failed. There was uh, one of the examples they mentioned a uh, man uh, that he used to uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be tested and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him by he's not able to urinate basically yeah. you know he used to go around to the children in the town and he would say you know uh, don't be like uh, so and so he failed this test 
you don't ask for a test. Mm -hmm. If it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person has to be patient mm -hmm. and to face this with patience, with being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to him the best, to be an example to the ummah, the Prophet mm -hmm. for the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be clear that goodness comes after this struggle and patience. Oh. And it's a beautiful one. Umar radiyallahu amazingly, he said, uh, that we lived we lived the yeah, best yeah. of our life in patience not in anything else yeah. when a person is patient for the sake of Allah for some time he starts to enjoy uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for him until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes the situation subhanallah what got in my mind Sheikh Ibrahim it's a side note like when you said this hadith Sheikh Ibrahim about like you don't wish for meeting the enemy how is it possible for anyone who can claim about the Prophet that he wanted to invade people when he says something like that. Right. Like because if anybody wants to just conquer like the Mongols and the other like nations who occupy lands, they would like actually encourage people, let's go and invade them and so on. Right. It wouldn't be the opposite, like don't wish this to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's it's uh, the concept of that in the, in the deen of Islam mm -hmm. and how the Prophet ﷺ did. So, so. It was not for any materialistic benefit mm -hmm. or anything of that you know, nation. It was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the name of Allah to be superior, for the best of the people, to the people. <laughs> and this is the, the, the truthfulness and the goodness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in the Prophet and the companions of the Prophet. SubhanAllah. What, what about Shaykh Ibrahim, like the pain that the Prophet had from the animosity of his people and his nation, was it different like before the death of his uncle and after? Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ was a, a mean of protection to the Prophet ﷺ and mm -hmm. the people would not dare to do things to the Prophet ﷺ because of the status of his uncle. Mm -hmm. And when he died, uh, the things became totally different. And people became more uh, fierce in the attack to the Prophet ﷺ, especially that uh, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ and the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, Khadija ﷺ, the two major support so the Prophet والسلام, died in the same year. And this was a very difficult mm -hmm. time for the Prophet والسلام, And uh, the Prophet والسلام, faced all kinds of things in it. And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this most difficult time, He chose the Prophet والسلام, and elevated him in the journey of Al-Isra and Mi'raj. Mm -hmm. And that's where with the difficult times, the ease comes. Mm -hmm. And this actually, this is a principle Beautiful. in the deen of Al-Islam. Mm -hmm that the more it gets tighter, the more the ease is coming near. Mm -hmm. And that's what we read all the time in the Qur'an. Uh, with difficulties, ease comes. With difficulty, ease comes. SubhanAllah. What came also to my mind, Sheikh Ibrahim, like the, the very famous story about Prophet Sulaiman. Like we always say that he was rich, he was a king and so on. But we for, forgot that before this, he had like, we can say, um, a trial, a tribulation, something like this in his body also. We only mention Prophet Ayyub mm -hmm. and say that he had like uh, illness and Allah like changed this after his patience and gave him kids instead of like the other lost ones. Also Prophet Sulaiman. And this is like the same concept of when you're patient with things that are hard, then you're going to have inshallah lots of like right. blessings and bounties from Allah. Right. And that's why it's a, it's a lesson for all of us that many people, they don't understand what this life is all about. Mm -hmm. They think that life is a place of fun and enjoyment and entertainment and all kinds of delight in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can wish and want whatever you want, <laughs> but this is not what life is. Life is painful. Mm -hmm. There's pain in it and mm -hmm. there's joy in it. Mm -hmm. There's bitterness in it and there's sweetness in it. It, it never stays on one way. Uh, people get sick and they're healthy and then other people, they, you know, and everybody will die. And, this is how the nature of life is. Mm -hmm. So if a person would focus just on in this life that he is going to be physically, materialistically happy, he's going to be the most miserable person. But if a person understands the reality of this life, the real mm -hmm. happiness will be that he's always pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Know that he has a mission on, on the face of earth. If Allah give him, and while he's taking the means, he's grateful to Allah, he's happy. Mm -hmm. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away from him something, he's patient, he's seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's still happy. SubhanAllah. It doesn't matter. And that's what Sheikh Hussain Tamir, for example, Rahimahullah, he said, hmm. What would my enemies do uh, to me? They cannot do anything to me. If they uh, imprison me, uh, this is khalwa. I stay secluded, I worship Allah, read Quran and so on. If they kick me out of my land, uh, I travel around and I benefit. If they kill me, this is martyrdom. Uh, 
You know, they, they are stuck. They cannot deal with really a true believer. Mm -hmm. But with someone with weak iman and so on, the hearts are attached to this world. You take that away, Taisa Abdul Dhiram, Taisa Abdul Dinar, as the Prophet SallAllahu Subhanallah. Uh, also, it's like denial of reality. Like, because we see in some of the media, and not only in the West, also in the East, in the Muslim world and so on, denial of like the, the, the loss of beauty, mm -hmm. denial of death. Mm -hmm. Like, they the try to make it seem like we live forever and mm -hmm. so on. So we can say like the denial of the message of Islam is a denial of the basic things. Mm -hmm. Because when, when people like they get attached with these things, they, they don't believe that they're going to face calamity. And when they face calamity, then psychological problems can fall. Right. And this mm -hmm. is the delusion and the deception that people are living in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in mm -hmm. the Quran. Uh, that this, the enjoyment of this life is ghurur, is deception. Mm -hmm. And the head of this ghurur is the shaitan. Shaitan, his job is to adorn the evil to the people. And it's based exactly like intoxications. Mm -hmm. Intoxications, what does it do to the person? Makes him feel extremely happy. Mm -hmm. But he's, in, he's intoxicated, he's not sober, he's not thinking intellectually. He's just fulfilling a desire to make him feel nice and be, feel happy. Mm -hmm. But what happens to him after he comes back to the reality of this life and he ruins himself and ruins his life. And at the end he's so regretful and he has to seek help. Uh, so this is exactly what the, this life is doing to the human beings unless they have iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from, from the life of the Prophet sallam, when can we get like, the, in, in our daily lives, when do we react and when do we forgive? Because we know that at certain times, from Prophet even said to the companions, don't react. And we had also verses, I think, from the Quran saying this, that they were for, forbidden from fighting back. But at a certain time, you can fight back. Where is the distinction? See, the, the goal mm -hmm. is to bring what is benefiting. And mm -hmm. what is benefiting is not for a personal benefit, mm -hmm. but rather for the deen of Allah, mm -hmm. for the good cause of making the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala superior. So if people, they have no means whatsoever, mm -hmm. and they're oppressed and weak and so on, mm. this is where the time to be more uh, uh, forgiving. Mm. Not forgiving as a way of deception, but rather a way to uh, take the means of whatever a person has, to mm. acknowledge the reality of this life. Mm. So mm. this is what the Prophet ﷺ was in Mecca. Mm -hmm. And then when a person has the means and the authority, it doesn't mean that the person would be evil, mm. but rather to bring what is right. To stand up for your rights. Right, like mm. for example, a family. A person is in charge of the household. He's the head of the household. He would establish what is good. He would enforce it mm. with goodness and everything, but he has authority. He has the means to do it. He has the means to take that uh, equipment outside of the house. He has the means to bring what is good and so on. But someone, there is a son or a daughter and so on. And there is evil being practiced in the household. He has no means. What should he do? Should he throw things <laughs> outside and, and he get punished? No, but rather, he would advise and he would be kind and so on. That's his position. And that's why to acknowledge that is important. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sheikh Ibrahim. Time flies as usual with you. Thank you so much. And thank you, dear brothers and sisters, for tuning in. Until next time, Signs of Prophethood. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.